A car is moving at high speed with heat on the wall, as shown in the figures. So there is a initial speed u, and suppose it will stop finally at v is zero. If it is wearing a seat belt, which of the following is true? Can it reduce the change in momentum? The answer is no, because no matter whether the person wearing seat belt or not, the v and u will not change. But because it can reduce the impact force by increasing the duration of impact, and also it can prevent the person from falling out. What if he is not wearing seat belt? How will the force time graph change? Because the change of momentum is the same, so we keep the same area, but with a shorter impact time and a larger maximum impact force. How about the interior of the helmet? Usually, it's made of spongy material. How to explain its importance? Using spongy material can increase the time of impact, so that it can reduce the impact force acting on the person. This is how we usually use to describe this kind of situation. So the two key points are reducing the impact force and increase the time of impact. Let's see the last examples here. Suppose there is a dry cell fall down from the building. So make sure you change the unit to kg first. And accidentally it hit on the girl. How to find the average force acting on the girl? So firstly, we have to find what is the speed of the dry cell before it hit on the girl. How to find this speed? Finding this speed, we one way is to consider the energy. If we use the energy to understand this situation, you can see that it's just the PE loss equals to the KE gain, a very standard situation of a free fall motion. So we can also remove the m because the m is the same on both sides. By using this equation, we can find out the speed that just hit on the girl. We can use the f net equal to m v minus m u over t. Suppose after it hit on the girl, it stops. Then we can substitute the v as zero and u with the speed that we just found. This is the average force, but it's not the average force acting on the girl, but it's just the f net here. So why the average force acting on the girl is not equal to this f net? When we do the calculation. This F net is referred to the dry cell because we substitute the mass of the dry cell, speed of the dry cell. So the force is also related to the dry cell. But the girl is experience the normal reaction force. This is the difference. So in order to find the average force at the girl, we should use R minus mg equals to the F net, so that. The force acting on the girl is a little bit higher than the F net we have just calculated. So try to digest this part. And then, what are the assumptions we have made? So far, we have made some assumption. Firstly, we have neglected the height of the girl. And then, we also assume the air resistance is negligible. But the last assumption is the most important assumption. Actually, why do we substitute zero as the v? Is the dry cell really stop? We assume the dry cell does not rebound from the girl's head, which is a more realistic situation for something fall down on somebody's head. <laughs>